Water, the lifeblood of our planet, the essence that fuels life as we know it. This seemingly simple substance is so much more than just H2O. It's the morning dew on a spider's web, the vast oceans that cover more than 70% of our Earth, the ice caps that crown our poles, and the vapor that forms the clouds in our skies. It's the hydration that quenches our thirst and the source that sustains our crops. From the smallest microorganism to the largest mammal, water is a necessity for survival. It's the silent hero in the story of life on Earth, playing a crucial role in our environment, climate, and overall ecosystem health. But how much do we really know about our planet's water? How is it distributed? How much is there? And most importantly, how can we protect it? Today we embark on a journey to explore the mind-boggling statistics about Earth's water. Dive with us into the blue expanse as we explore how water is distributed globally. Let's start by visualizing Earth as a giant water balloon. Now, if we were to pop this balloon, where would the water go? Well, the vast majority, about 97%, would spill out into the oceans, covering over 70% of our planet's surface. This immense body of salt water, teeming with life, is our planet's primary water reservoir. But what about the remaining 3% of Earth's water? Surely it's not all in your morning cup of coffee, right? Indeed it's not. Nearly 70% of this fresh water is frozen, trapped in the icy confines of glaciers and ice caps, predominantly in the polar regions and high mountain ranges. So what about the rest of the fresh water? Well, 30% is stored underground as groundwater, filling the tiny spaces between rocks and soil in what we call aquifers. This subterranean reservoir is a vital source of drinking water for many communities around the world. Now, let's not forget about the tiny fraction of water that's in our rivers, lakes, and swamps. Even though they account for less than 1% of Earth's total water, they play a critical role in supporting terrestrial life and maintaining our planet's biodiversity. Lastly, there's a minuscule amount of water, about 0.001%, that's floating around in the atmosphere as water vapor. This atmospheric water plays a critical role in Earth's water cycle, helping to distribute water around the globe. As we see, the majority of our planet's water is tucked away in vast oceans, but what about the rest? Stay tuned as we delve deeper into the world of glaciers, groundwater, and the water that's flowing right beneath your feet. Oceans, these giant reservoirs, hold an almost unimaginable amount of water. Covering over 70% of Earth's surface, their vastness is something of a marvel. The oceans are not just expansive, they are also incredibly deep. The average depth of the ocean is about 12,080.7 feet. That's nearly 2.3 miles deep. Imagine this. If you were to take all the water in the oceans and spread it evenly over the Earth's entire surface, it would create a layer of water about 8,848.4 feet deep. That's higher than Mount Everest, the tallest peak in the world. The Pacific Ocean alone, the largest and deepest ocean on Earth, holds more than half of the Earth's open ocean water. But the oceans do more than just store water. They also play a vital role in regulating our planet's climate. The oceans absorb heat from the sun and distribute it around the world through currents, helping to moderate global temperatures. They also act as a giant sponge, soaking up about a quarter of all the carbon dioxide that humans pump into the atmosphere. But it's not just salt water in the oceans. In fact, the oceans hold 97% of all Earth's water, but only a tiny fraction of that, about 2.5%, is fresh water. And most of that fresh water isn't readily accessible because it's locked away in ice caps and glaciers. The oceans are vast and deep, but let's not forget about the fresh water locked away in ice. This precious resource is critical for life on Earth, yet it remains largely untapped due to its remote and often harsh locations. So, while the oceans may be Earth's giant reservoir, they are just one piece of the complex puzzle that is our planet's water supply. As we move forward, it's crucial that we continue to explore and understand these vast water resources and the role they play in sustaining life on our planet. Frozen in time, yet critical to life, Glaciers and ice caps play a pivotal role in our water story. These icy giants, often seen as frozen rivers, are more than just scenic splendors. They are the Earth's largest reservoir of fresh water, holding about 68% of the world's total. That's right, almost three quarters of all the fresh water on Earth is frozen in these formidable ice structures. Glaciers and ice caps are predominantly found in polar regions and high altitude mountain ranges. These frozen fortresses are formed over thousands of years as layers of snow accumulate, compress, and turn into ice. 
The sheer weight of these layers forces the ice to flow slowly, shaping the landscape beneath. Now, let's consider the scale of these icy behemoths. The largest glacier on Earth, the Lambert Fisher Glacier in Antarctica, is over 400 kilometers long and up to 100 kilometers wide. That's longer than the entire length of the Grand Canyon. And it's not just their size that's impressive. The amount of water stored in glaciers and ice caps is enough to raise global sea levels by about 70 meters. That's nearly 230 feet, if they were to melt completely. But glaciers and ice caps aren't just frozen water storage units. They also serve as natural thermometers, helping scientists track climate change. As the Earth warms, these icy giants are melting at an unprecedented rate, causing sea levels to rise and threatening coastal communities around the world. Furthermore, glaciers are a vital source of fresh water for many communities. They feed rivers and lakes, providing water for drinking, irrigation, and hydroelectric power. Yet as these icy reservoirs recede, the future of these water supplies is in jeopardy. From icy heights, we now journey beneath the surface to the hidden world of groundwater. As we delve deeper into our water story, let's remember the crucial role of these frozen giants and the urgent need to protect them. Beneath our feet lies a vast reservoir, unseen but indispensable. Imagine standing on a giant sponge soaked with water. That's essentially what's happening when we walk on the ground. We're treading on a massive hidden water storage system known as groundwater and aquifers. Groundwater isn't just a puddle sitting somewhere beneath the surface, it's water held within the pores of soil, sand, and rocks. When water accumulates in these spaces, it forms an aquifer, a subterranean reservoir that can hold mind-boggling amounts of water. These aquifers are our planet's secret water supply. They're like nature's water bottles, tucked away for when we need it, and we need it a lot. Groundwater accounts for almost a third of all freshwater used in the United States. It's a lifeline for agriculture, providing irrigation for crops. It's also a crucial drinking water source, especially in rural areas. But it's not just about us humans. Groundwater is also vital for maintaining the health of our ecosystems. It feeds our rivers and lakes, and it sustains vegetation during dry periods. Imagine a tree being able to take a sip from an underground water bottle whenever it gets thirsty. That's how important groundwater is. Now here's a staggering fact. The volume of water contained in all the world's aquifers is estimated to be about 100 times the total fresh water found in Earth's rivers and lakes. Yes, you heard that right. There's a hundred times more water beneath our feet than in all the rivers and lakes of the world combined. But this hidden treasure is not limitless. Overuse and pollution are threatening our groundwater supplies. Just like any other natural resource, it needs to be used sustainably and protected for future generations. So next time you take a sip of water, remember that it might have come from a hidden reservoir deep beneath the ground. It's a reminder that water is everywhere around us, even when we can't see it. From below ground we ascend to the skies, where water takes another form. Even the air we breathe carries the essence of life, water. Yes, that's right! Our atmosphere is another reservoir where water resides, albeit in a gaseous form. This invisible water, known as humidity, plays a crucial role in the water cycle, the constant exchange of water between the Earth and the atmosphere. Humidity might be invisible to our naked eyes, but its impact is quite palpable. It determines our weather, forms clouds, and eventually returns to the Earth as precipitation, completing a crucial step in the water cycle. It's a fascinating system, really. On hot, humid days, we might complain about the stickiness in the air, but that very stickiness is part of a complex system that keeps our planet hydrated. It's a delicate balance and every component, including atmospheric water, is vital. As we've seen, water is everywhere, even within us. It truly is the essence of life. Water is not just around us, but it's in us, fueling life from within. Now let's dive deeper into the realm of living organisms where water plays an integral role. From the smallest bacterium to the largest blue whale, water is a vital life force that sustains us all. Imagine this. The human body in all its complexity is about 60% water. Yes, you heard it right. Over half of our body weight comes from water. This vital fluid performs many functions, from flushing out toxins to maintaining our body temperature and even lubricating our joints. It's our body's highway, transporting essential nutrients and oxygen to where they're needed most. But it's not just us humans who are swimming on the inside. Take a look at other members of the animal kingdom. An elephant, despite its massive size, is made up of approximately 70% water. Even the dry-looking desert-dwelling camel has a body that's 50% water. 
And the story doesn't end with animals. Water is the lifeblood of plants too. A tree, for instance, is about 50% water. This essential element allows plants to transport nutrients from the soil, produce food through photosynthesis, and maintain their structure. Even the tiniest life forms like bacteria are mostly water. They can be up to 90% water. It's pretty mind-boggling when you think about it. Life as we know it, in all its diverse forms, is fundamentally reliant on water. But it's not just about quantity. The quality of water matters too. The water inside living organisms needs to be clean and free from harmful contaminants. This is why access to clean water is so crucial for all life forms. So from the towering trees to the tiny bacteria, and of course us humans, we're all united by our dependence on water. It's a common thread that runs through all life on Earth, reminding us of our shared origins and interconnectedness. Yet, despite its ubiquity, water scarcity is a stark reality for many. As we continue our journey, we'll delve into this critical issue and explore how it affects life on our planet. In a world awash with water, millions still thirst for access to clean water. It's a paradox that throws into sharp relief the inequalities that divide our planet. Despite the abundance of water on Earth, a staggering one in three people globally do not have access to safe drinking water. That's over 2 billion individuals for whom clean water is not a given, but a luxury. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the situation is even more dire. Nearly half of the population there lacks access to clean water. Picture this. It's like the entire population of North and South America combined, waking up every day without a sure source of safe water. But it's not just about drinking water. Sanitation, too, is a major issue. Over half of the global population, or around 4.2 billion people, do not have access to safe sanitation. This lack of basic services exposes them to preventable diseases like cholera and typhoid, posing significant health risks. And it's not just about health. The lack of access to water also impacts education and economic opportunities. Women and girls, who are often responsible for collecting water in these regions, spend an estimated 200 million hours hauling water each day. That's time they could have spent in school or earning an income. The issue of water scarcity is also tied to our changing climate. As global temperatures rise, water scarcity is predicted to worsen, especially in already arid regions. By 2050, up to 5.7 billion people could live in areas where water is scarce for at least one month a year. So, the question is, how did we get here? Well, it's a complex issue involving politics, infrastructure, and economics. But one thing is clear. Water is a basic human right, and yet, it remains out of reach for a significant portion of the world's population. How we use water also plays a crucial role in its availability, and that's something we'll explore in the next segment. Stay tuned. Every drop counts. Our consumption patterns shape our water future. Let's dive into the deep end of our water usage. To fully grasp the scale of our water consumption, we need to look at three major sectors. Agriculture, industry, and households. Agriculture is the largest consumer of our global water resources, accounting for a whopping 70% of all water withdrawals. That's right, 70%. This is primarily due to irrigation, which is essential for growing the food we all depend on daily. Now let's turn our attention to the industry sector. This includes everything from power plants to factories and construction sites. Believe it or not, industry accounts for about 20% of total water consumption worldwide. Power plants alone, which use water for cooling, account for a significant chunk of this percentage. Now, what about our homes? You might be surprised to learn that only about 10% of worldwide water consumption is attributed to household use. Yes, only 10%. This includes everything from our morning showers and flushing toilets to washing dishes and laundry. It's important to note, though, that this average can vary greatly from country to country, and even city to city, depending on local water availability and habits. It's clear that our water consumption is not just about quenching our thirst or taking a shower. It's intricately linked to the food we eat, the energy we use, and the products we consume daily. We all have a part to play in shaping our water future, from farmers and industries to individuals in their homes. By understanding our consumption patterns, we can make informed decisions to reduce our water footprint. Small changes can make a big difference. Turning off the tap while brushing your teeth, installing water-efficient appliances, or choosing foods with a lower water footprint are all steps in the right direction. 
So remember, every time we use water, we're making a choice. We're deciding what kind of water future we want. Our changing climate is also shaping our water future. Climate change, a global concern, has a profound impact on our water resources. As the world warms, evaporation rates increase, altering precipitation patterns. This can lead to droughts in some areas and floods in others, disrupting the delicate balance of our ecosystems. Furthermore, climate change contributes to the melting of glaciers and ice caps, vast reservoirs of fresh water. As they melt, sea levels rise, posing a threat to coastal communities. But there's another less visible issue. The alteration of the water cycle can also lead to a decrease in the availability of fresh water. Imagine a world where what was once a reliable river is now a seasonal trickle, or where fertile plains are transformed into arid landscapes. This is the reality for many regions already. Despite these challenges, there is hope through conservation efforts. With the right actions, we can mitigate the impact of climate change on our water resources and ensure a sustainable future for all. Conserving water one drop at a time is our pathway to a sustainable future. In the face of growing water scarcity and climate volatility, the world is rallying to safeguard our most precious resource. Governments, organizations, and individuals alike are taking significant strides in water conservation, driven by a shared understanding of water's indispensable role in our survival and well-being. At the global forefront, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. Six calls for ensuring availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all by the year 2030. This ambitious target underscores the collective will to address water scarcity, improve water quality, and protect and restore water-related ecosystems. Countries across the globe are also stepping up their game. Israel, for instance, has emerged as a leader in water conservation through its pioneering work in desalination and drip irrigation technology. Singapore, on the other hand, has made significant strides in water recycling and rainwater harvesting, setting a benchmark for urban water management. But the journey doesn't stop at the macro level. Every individual has a significant role to play in this global effort. Small actions like turning off the tap while brushing your teeth or fixing a leaky faucet can save thousands of gallons of water each year. Similarly, choosing to eat less water-intensive foods or opting for water-efficient appliances can make a considerable difference. Water conservation is not just about saving water, it's about creating a culture of respect for this life-sustaining resource. It's about understanding the intricate balance of our ecosystems and recognizing our role in preserving it. It's about ensuring that our children and their children have access to clean, safe water, just like we do. And so, as we stand at the crossroads of a water-stressed future, there is a glimmer of hope. With every drop saved, we are writing a new chapter in our water story, a story of resilience, responsibility, and collective action. Our water story is one of awe, concern, and hope. We've journeyed through the staggering statistics about Earth's water. We've seen how it's distributed, from the vast oceans to the glaciers beneath the ground and even in the air around us. And we've seen how vital it is, not just for us, but for all life on Earth. We've also explored the sobering reality of water scarcity and the impact that our actions and climate change can have on this invaluable resource. But remember, we're not powerless. We all play a part in the global water story. From the water we drink to the water we use in our everyday lives, every drop counts. We can all make a difference by being mindful of our water use, supporting initiatives that protect our water resources, and spreading awareness about these critical issues. Join us in making every drop count. Share this video, engage in conversation, and let's work together to conserve our precious water resources.